Hello everyone, we're going to be going back to 1977 because I'm returning 2020, I no longer want to be a part of it, it is just getting too crazy out there, I really hope, truly and honestly, that all of you are staying safe, I mean, just stay safe. Uh, but we're going to go back to 1977 and play the very first game that I've ever played in my entire lifetime, shmup-wise. Uh, none other than Air Sea Battle, a.k.a. Target Fun, which I played on this year's telegames initially. But it was on the Atari 2600 as Air Sea Battle for pretty much everybody else around the world. We're going to play this and we're going to do a bit of a two-player mode activate against the CPU this time. And for those of you who own the real system, you know that the cartridges actually detailed whether or not you're playing against a human or controller, uh, computer-controlled opponent on the front of the cartridge. Uh, you can have like 40 to 50 plus game variations on the front of the cartridge. It'd be like, game 1 through 10 is a human opponent, game 20 through 30 is a computer opponent, then uh, game 30 through 40 might be a tank or a plane and so on. But we're going to go into hockey binds right now. We're going to do a uh, fast, uh, fast forward toggle. Program it to R2 right now. And the idea is to try to get as high a score as you can. And uh, we're basically going to game 3, which is a computer controlled opponent. Push and start here. The idea is to get as high a score as you can within the time limit. And uh, once the time limit is about to expire, the numbers on the top of the screen will flash. If you can get about 20, you're doing pretty good. Uh, there was a game that was uh, quite a bit like this called Candy Bomber, which I played on the Atari Flashback Collection on PS4. And I had to do Reverse Breakout, get all the blocks within the time frame, and that was an insane challenge. Uh, but right now we're just playing uh, normal speed, the way the game actually ran. But uh, I can do fast forward uh, motion uh, here with R2. Now we're playing uh, with power. We're doing blast process and I need to charge to 600. Oh jeez, third time the charm. Bam! I don't think I'm going to get 20, but I'll see what I can do. Come on 20, come on 20. Oh jeez. What a fail. I got this. I got this. Doing a John Wick style. Very, very cool stuff, though. Can I get 20? Can I get 20? Maybe. Four more and I'm to 20. Oh, that's going to be a tough one. Three more and I'm to 20. Two more and I'm to 20. Yeah, try it out for yourself, guys, and you guys see if you can get 20. Call 20 the uh, median for most people, I'd say, to start with. I'm going to try to do higher than 20. Oh, jeez. I want to try to get higher than 20. 22. And uh, 24. I'm going to get 25 before the time expires there. Okay, what else can I do? Bam! Oh, jeez. 26. Almost had 30. And I'm missing on that play. I got 26. So try air seat battle and see if you can get 26 or higher and let me know. But uh, we're going to disable fast forward toggle, go back into retro settings input, and uh, take off hockey binds for that. You want to make sure you have slow motion and or fast forward off when you leave. That way you don't affect the other games, of course. But we're going to go to another game right now. Uh, let's load, uh, go basically to some isometric games. And we're going to start out with one of the very first ones ever called Zaxxon. And we're going to play a different version of this right now. We're actually going to go to uh, the Atom computer version, which is uh, cassette tape at the time. And we're going to load this right now. And you can see the uh, glorious 3D box artwork here. For this, it is uh, Zaxxon. It was a super cartridge, like a super game module. It was on a cassette tape at the time. And I had this on my Atom computer. You can play the arcade version of this as well, but I'm going to be running this with Epi Neo right now. Arcade uh, Final Burn Neo, sorry. And I passed it. But damn cool. I'll do a tutorial on how to run this for you guys and guys who want to check it out. But this is so sweet. And you can play a few games like Dragon's Lair, Buck Rogers. You can play a Pac-Man Metal Gear hack. It is cool as hell. But right now we're playing the exact sound ClicoVision version. And then uh, this is what I consider the predecessor to a future game. And you'll see what I mean in a moment here. So we're playing the ColecoVision version, and uh, this is like beyond the scope of Atari 2600 at time. It was just absolutely amazing. And I'm moving up or down. You can see my uh, altitude here. This is so cool. But yes, there's another game that came out much uh, after this. That uh, Broken Sprite, you know what I'm talking about in advance here. But yes, this is way ahead of its time. And uh, Dragon Slayer on the ColecoVision was actually the very first home port. It is so sweet. And I'm going to have to do a separate video on that. But yes, this is Axon. I'd recommend trying this version and or even the arcade version, which runs great on main 2003 stream. You need to use samples, though. You could use the arcade uh, RetroArch Samples HMOD if you're running with, of course, uh, main 2003 stream on the Mega Drive, SNES, or NES Classic. But uh, this is cool as hell. And I'm going to be running into uh, another game right now, a nice metro game. We're going to do these right in order. Dummy, I'm going to go to Mega Drive. We're going to load these right in order uh, chronologically of the releases. I'm talking about Viewpoint. I could have just gotten a reverse here. 
what we're doing Viewpoint, which is a great game on Mega Drive. And I'm going to be doing, uh, this is going to be part of a two, uh, two, oh, two for one update here. We're going to the Sega, we're going to run this with Genesis Plus GX right now. And uh, some games on the original hardware had issues as far as uh, performance and speed, despite being touted as having a blast uh, processing platform. Because I'm talking about Sonic Spinball, Viewpoint, a few other games actually did not run that well. And Sammy, we know, went on to make some games uh, Neo Geo hardware-wise and such. But here we have our uh, kind of like uh, isometric perspective for our type and such. And this game actually has quite a bit of slowdown. So, I mean, uh, in this case, slowdown helps make the game a lot easier. I mean, just whenever I do the explosions on the screen, they slow down. So what I'm thinking about doing for the update is a variant where I'm going to have basically fixes. Look at that, it's slowing down right now. So the bullet hell is not quite there because I'm having slow down. It's not blast processing right now. It's the opposite. But yes, it's cool. I mean, the soundtrack is kind of cool seeing how it uh, evolved over the different releases. I can push uh, the button here to do a little charge attack, which gives me even more slow down. Not bad, though. I mean, if it was the only version you could play this, not bad whatsoever. But then they also released this for PlayStation 1, which I'm going to load up next real quick. And we're going to do a little bit of comparison of the soundtrack here. Uh, but again, I'm going to do a little bit of an update and uh, remove the slowdown completely for Viewpoint from Mega Drive. That is one thing I'm doing work in progress on. But we're going to Viewpoint right now. Another isometric game. Uh, I passed it. Right here. And uh, look at a beautiful 3D uh, jewel case art. And we're going to load this up with uh, Neon Core. Right here. And you'll see the differential between this. It has a CD soundtrack, but we're going to compare this directly to the Mega Drive version. And I'm going to be doing maybe a few more videos with Isometric Games because there are a couple hundred of these that I'm a big, big fan of. And one of my absolute favorites is obviously RC Pro-Am, Cobra Triangle, and so on. I mean, uh, Rare started out doing quite a few uh, Isometric Games. But here we're starting out. Uh, it has cool shading. I love the shading, and the color palette is awesome here. Notice that the soundtrack sounds quite a bit like uh, Streets of Rage and Revenge of Shinobi in another particular game. Interesting soundtrack. And still, uh, not extremely hard. I mean, I can manage this challenge here. It's not quite bullet hell yet. But there's another version of this which uh, I'm actually going to play next. <laughs> this sounds like your typical song from the 1990s, early 90s and such. Not bad. Almost sounds like something like uh, Technotronic or Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch and so on. I'm actually going to play my favorite version of this right now. I'm going to play the Neo Geo CD version. Let's see for yourself here in a moment. And uh, we're going to do Viewpoint with that. That nice Geo artwork there. And let's make sure I load the right file. There we go. And we're going to load it with the Neo CD. Core. You do need to have BIOS for this. If you need any help running BIOS, let me know. But this is by far my favorite version. And uh, typically, they remove a few frames of animation. But uh, Neo Geo CD versions are awesome because uh, they have some cool features like additional settings. And right here, I have a difficulty level here. I mean, look at this. I can go to easy, normal, hard, hardest, or MVS. I'm going to go to hardest right now. We're going to do hard mode activate. But listen to this amazing soundtrack. And this is the definitive version of Viewpoint, in my opinion. Love the soundtrack here. And we're playing the hardest difficulty imaginable here. See if I can get anywhere in here. I'm probably going to get my butt whooped. But yes, uh, Zag Sound all the way up to the viewpoint. Absolutely love this, I mean. And uh, there's another thing very, very interesting about this, which I'm going to show you. Yeah, we got Bullet out now. That was running fast. No slowdown. Just incredibly fast. And uh, very, very awesome. I'm probably going to die very, very quick, though. But I'm going to see if I can get to this initial part here. And we got enemy, uh, enemies that look like they're straight out of Zebius here. But this really does feel like an uh, uh, isometric version of our type with a little bit of Zebius mixed in, a little bit of Radian. Uh, Radian, sorry. Then we have these little uh, turn styles we gotta shoot to get through here. I'm gonna do some more isometric games though, but uh, some of you might not be uh, aware of the fact that. The sequel to this game was never released and uh, recently got dumped. I'm going to be showcasing that next. Beautiful, beautiful game indeed, though. I'm doing good in hard mode activate thus far. But we're actually going to be playing the uh, unreleased uh, dump next. Whoa! 
and I lost my life there. But we're going to be coming back to this. I'm going to exit back to the main user interface. But before I do that, I'm going to show you another game that had an incredible soundtrack, much like Viewpoint, from the 1990s and such. It's none other than uh, Adventure Island on Super Nintendo. It has a great soundtrack. And for other soundtracks that are similar to this, try out Revenge of Shinobi and Streets of Rage on the... Uh, Mega Drive as well, but right here, this game has a beautiful, beautiful soundtrack. Very, very much similar to the Viewpoint soundtrack. We're going to run this with SNES 9X 2005, which runs most games. Uh, performance and speed-wise the best. We're going to do that right here. Then we're going to exit back to the main user interface, because I'm going to swap out my controller for an analog controller. But Hudson South, great company. They're behind the original TurboGrafx-16 and uh, even Bomberman and such. But this soundtrack here will remind you quite a bit of Viewpoint. You'll see the moment here. It has some nice Mode 7 skill and, and effect as well. Here's Mode 7. Awesome. Always love the Mode 7 scaling. But here's the soundtrack, and it is so damn beautiful. But yeah, if you like <laughs> if you like the soundtrack to Viewpoint, this is going to remind you. It has kind of the same tempo and rhythm going on with it. Fantastic game. Well worth your time. And one of the absolute best soundtracks on uh, Super Nintendo. Right up there with the likes of games like ActRaiser. And yes, it reminds me of Technotronic and, uh, of course, uh, stuff like Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. Great, great game, indeed. And there are quite a few uh, Adventure Island games. Oh, jeez. <laughs> but we're going to exit back to the main user interface right now. And uh, we're going to switch out my controller. And then you're going to... Now I have an analog controller as well for stuff like Nintendo 64, which I'm going to be running right now. So I'm going to go into Retro Rock here. Now I'm using my analog controller, and uh, I'm going to be running the unreleased version of the sequel to Viewpoint right now. Okay, Star Trek Dummy, and Nintendo 64. Not to say probably one of my first uh, isometric games I was a big fan of was Marble Madness, which I'll make sure I get in the next video. And thank you, Alucard, for uh, telling me about this game and that it was dumb. I did not even realize it until a few days ago, but it's Viewpoint 2064, made by American Sammy. It was meant to come out on the uh, Neo Geo, but uh, here it is for Nintendo 64. We're going to run uh, right now with the Gloopin' Core, which runs the Nintendo 64 games the best. And I'm using Analog, which is uh, much, much better for a game like this. Because it not only has the uh, isometric levels, it also has Star Fox style levels. Okay? An incredible game. And it has a... It's not a fully finished product. I mean, it was not released, but it has even like a stage like from the get-go, which is uh, not really normal for a game of this kind. You'll see what I mean in a moment here. See right here, I can do stage select. And I can go to any stage within the game here. I mean, that's kind of cool. But normally, I would play legitimately and go to all stages. We'll do stage one right now. But here, you can actually see all the stages with uh, stage select. But we got a uh, 3D perspective just like Star Fox here. And this is running awesome. I'm glooping. It has another great uh, soundtrack here. It's got that Unreal's uh, shmup awesomeness, just like Panzer Dragoon and even the uh, Camera 2000 on PlayStation 1. I have a feeling I'm going to do pretty good at this game. Okay, this run, awesome here. Very, very cool. It reminds me a bit of Sin and Punishment 2 with the way the perspective is. Love that targeting system. It reminds me of Afterburner Climax, which is on Xbox 360, as well as PS3. I'm gonna have to definitely showcase that game. That was such an awesome game. It's like uh, one of those roguelike games where you can actually play the game and unlock uh, various power-ups, like Infinity Boost, Infinity Missiles, and so on. It makes playing the game more and more fun, to the point where you have to beat the game within a certain time limit, at the hardest difficulty, and so on. Okay, open up here. Awesome. Absolutely digging this game though, and again, I didn't even know about this game until a few days ago when Alucard, uh, one of our testers for Hashi, informed me because he knew I was a big Shmup fan. And what do we have here? We're shooting fish in a barrel right now. Very, very cool indeed. We have to see uh, some of the other stages in this game as well. But uh, another game I love that's like this is obviously Afterburner. Now I'd absolutely love to have a custom OST for Afterburner. Uh, and uh, if you ever played uh, Afterburner a couple years ago on Main Jump 3, you might have seen... Oh, I love that transition there. That is beautiful. 
It's like uh, the type of transition I love to see in a game like Smash Brothers. But in any case, uh, if you tried Afterburner on Mame 2003 a couple years ago, you might have noticed, oh jeez, bullet hell. You might have noticed that it actually ran kind of slow, but now it's actually running perfectly. Oh, wow. We got a little bit of bullet hell going on there. But I have my special power here. There we go. We're going to take this guy out. Sure, we're going to order here. Another smoke that I'm a big fan of on Dreamcast is Rez. Rez is fantastic. Should we say schmuck-tastic? But very, very cool here. I can see myself definitely going through this entire game. And look at the way the camera's changing. Whoa, what's that? Wow. A little bit of a dodge in here. So yes, I think I'm going to be playing this and trying to beat the entire game. I mean, after this video. This is awesome. I really, really wish this would have been released either on Neo Geo hardware or even like on MAME and such, and uh, here we have a Nintendo 64 uh, port or such of it. Awesome. And I believe this actually, I see some screenshots, I haven't got to it myself, but I believe there's actually some isometric changes, just like in Saxon, but so far, very, very thoroughly impressed with this. We got a little bit of a 3D thing here. I love the music here, it is so damn cool. I'll play this for another minute or two, see how far I can get before I uh, lose my life there. Yes, this would have been right at home on the Nintendo 64 Harbor. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. This music actually reminds me quite a bit of uh, Sonic Team's uh, Fantasy Star Line too. Look at that. I love that transition of 3D here. No, we're taking on a Warbird like a Klingon Warbird there. Yeah, thanks again, Alien Card and uh, Sammy, for your original development on this. But Alien Card, thanks for letting me know about this awesome, awesome game here. I have a feeling that I'm going to be beating this game quite easily. I mean, it's uh, not as challenging as say Ikaruga Raiders right? Silver Gone, but it is a damn fine game. And uh, let's see how well I can do here. How close I am to the end of stage one. Let's see. Oh no, boss battle. I'm going to beat my own words here and probably die on the boss. Let's see. Encounter. It looks like they had a little bit of a typo there. But, expected. Love the music here. It reminds me of the sound effects that you have, uh, kind of the metal sound effects that you have in Super Punch Out for Super Nintendo. Oh no. Spider Boss. I said I'm not going to have any difficulty in this game. Let's see if I can actually take this boss out without dying or losing uh, my life. I have a feeling I'm going to end up eating my own words here, though. By the way, this is the very first time I've played this game. You're seeing me play this for the first time ever right now. I just had it, tested it out for a few seconds, and you're seeing me run for the first time. Oh! <laughs> I'm expecting this thing to just dive at me. Whoa! Oh, I lost. Am I going to lose her? Whoa! Absolutely love this game. I'm rating this a solid 8 out of 10, but I might even rate it higher. Would have been kind of cool to have like a score on it, see how high of a score you can get. Oh wow. So far so good. Love the targeting system though. Any kind of game that has that on rails targeting is awesome. I'm taking this boss out. Whoa! Should be near the end here. Once I find out, like, uh, this game's unfinished and I can't beat the boss at all. I remember one time when I was actually playing around with Metroid uh, Zero Mission and Fusion, I actually tried an invincibility code to test something out, and I didn't realize that you could actually break the game by doing that. Uh, very, very cool game, though. Absolutely love this game. Awesome, awesome stuff here. But, uh, 